what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel now look at this nice and beautiful question we have here on the board that says for all real values of x x minus 1 over x all raised to the power of half plus 1 minus 1 over x all raised to the power of half is equal to x where to look for the value of x so our first step is to say let a be equal to this first expression we have here which is x minus 1 over x to the power of half now we need to remove this power of half and how do i do that is by taking the square of both sides so the square of a is a squared equal to the square of the right hand side cancels off this power of half so leaving behind x minus 1 all over x now I'm going to be doing the same thing to this other expression. So I'm going to say let b be equal to this second expression here, which is 1 minus 1 all over x to the power of half. Now let's remove this power of half by taking the square of both sides. So I'm going to be having b squared, which is the square of the left hand side, equal to taking the square of the right hand side cancels off this power of half leaving behind 1 minus 1 all over x. Good. So now let's go back to the original expression given to us in the question. Remember we said this first expression is a and the second expression is b. So I'm going to be writing a plus b, which is what I have here, equal to x. So I can call this one equation 1. Why? Because I'm going to be coming back to it later on. So, our next step is to multiply both sides of the equation by a minus b. So, I'm going to be multiplying the left-hand side by a minus b. So, I write a minus b times a plus b. I'll be doing the same thing to the right-hand side. Remember, whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. So, x times a minus b. Good. So, look at this expression very well. If you take note of this expression, you notice that this is difference of 2 squared. Difference of 2 squared means whenever I have m squared minus n squared, which is difference of 2 squared, this can be written as m minus n times m plus n. Good. So this is a difference of 2 squared, which can be written as a squared minus b squared, just like this one, equal to... What I have on the right is x times a minus b. So now, what is our a squared? a squared, we have it to be x minus 1 over x. So I'm going to be writing that x minus 1 all over x minus, which is this minus here, b squared. What is b squared? This is b squared here, which is 1 minus 1 over x. So I'm going to be opening a bracket before I write 1 minus 1 all over x x close your bracket equal to what i have on the right hand side which is x times a minus b good we are getting there so let's move forward to simplify this further all right so we have x minus one all over x now let's use this minus to open up the bracket so i'm going to be having minus one now minus times minus gives plus one all over x equal to x times a minus b. Now notice I have minus 1 all over x plus 1 all over x. So this is going to cancel out. So leaving behind x minus 1. So I'm going to be writing x minus 1 here equal to what I have on the right hand side, which is x times a minus b. Now I need the x to be on one side. And how do I do that? It's by dividing both sides by x. So our next step is to divide both sides by x. So I'm going to be dividing here by x and divide this other side by x. Now notice that x will cancel out here. So I'll be having a minus b here to be equal to x minus 1 all over x. Are you seeing that? Very good. So now I need to separate the fraction here. How do I separate the fraction? This is it. I'm going to be writing x divided by x, so x divided by x minus 1 divided by x, so 1 divided by x, equal to what I have on the right hand side, which is a 
minus b. So now x divided by x is going to give you 1. So I have 1 minus 1 all over x to be equal to a minus b. Now I need to flip the position. That means I'm going to be writing this one first. So I will, I'll be writing a minus b equal to this one, which is 1 minus 1 all over x. Very good. So I'm going to be calling this one equation 2. Remember, we've already got equation 1 before. So combining both equation, I'm going to be bringing equation 1 and equation 2 together and solve from there. All right. This was our equation 1 and this is our equation 2. So what are we going to do? We're going to be adding the two equations together. So add equation 1 and 2. So I'm going to be putting plus here. So a plus a will give you 2a. Now b plus minus b is gone. So x plus this expression here. So I'll be having equal to x plus what I have here, which is 1 minus 1 all over x. So I have added equation 1 and 2, and it gives me this. Now you know what? I'm going to be arranging this expression so that it looks good. So how do I do that? This becomes 2a equal to x. I'll be writing this one first, then write this plus 1 last. I'll tell you the reason. So x minus 1 all over x, now plus 1. The reason is this. Does this look familiar to you? Well, if it doesn't, let me show you real quick. All right, now take a look at this. X minus 1 all over X. What is it? X minus 1 all over X is equal to A squared. That means wherever I see this expression, I should be putting A squared there. So now let's go back to where we were and then substitute A squared wherever we found this. So let's go there. All right, so we have 2A equal to... So this expression is a square so I'm going to be putting a square here plus 1 now you can see that I have a quadratic equation so so let's arrange it very well so I have a squared I'll be writing a squared when this 2a crosses it becomes minus 2a now plus 1 equal to 0 and this can be factorized easily minus 1 and minus 1 so I'm going to be having a minus 1 in a bracket then another bracket I have a minus 1 equal to 0 but now notice this is double so I'm going to be writing a minus 1 or raised to the power of 2 equal to 0 or we write a minus 1 is equal to 0 then a is equal to when negative 1 crosses to the right hand side it becomes 1 that is how simple it is now since I have a I'm going to be substituting for the value of a from our original expression. Let me show you the original expression real quick. All right. So this is our original expression. And we said a is equal to this original expression, which is this one here. So I've already got a value for a. So I'm going to be putting a value for a as we solve along. So I'm going to be saying recall that. A is equal to x minus 1 all over x to the power of half, right? Cool. So I've already got a value for A, which is 1. So I'm going to be putting 1 here. 1 equal to x minus 1 all over x to the power of half. Now, canceling off this power of half, I'm going to be taking the square of both sides. So the square of 1 is 1 equal to x minus 1 all over x because the square of the right hand side cancels off the power of half so now our next step is to multiply through by x so x times 1 is x equal to x times x is x squared minus x times 1 all over x is 1 so we have a quadratic equation here again so since we have a quadratic equation here I'm going to be writing it in a proper way by moving this x to this side. So I have x squared. When x crosses, 
it becomes minus x then i have minus one here already equal to zero so me looking at this question or this equation you see that it is not factorizable so i'm going to be using the general formula to solve this quadratic equation so a here is one b is negative one and c is equal to negative one so our general formula we're using since we're looking for value of x so x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so let's substitute into this equation so we have x to be equal to negative b what is b b is negative 1 so i'm going to be putting negative 1 there plus or minus the square root of b squared which is negative 1 squared minus 4 times a a is 1 times c c is negative 1 so divide by 2a 2a which is 2 times 1 so this is going to give us x to be equal to this gives plus which is plus 1 plus or minus negative 1 square is 1 minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 is negative 4 so this gives us the square root of 5 so i'm going to be having the square root of 5 here all over 2 times 1 is 2 so we have two values of x here which i'm going to be separating so on separating we have x to be equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 or x is equal to 1 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. for those of us who are familiar with this you know that this is a golden ratio very good so now we have two values of x but we cannot accept two we're going to be accepting just one so which one are we accepting and which one are we disregarding well we can actually know which one to accept by putting them into our question given remember the question given is x minus one all over x to the power of half plus 1 minus 1 all over x to the power of half equal to x. Well, this is the original uh, question given to us. So, on substituting this first one, here on the left-hand side, we're going to be having 2.618. And uh, what we have for the value of x here, if we were to put it, we're going to get negative 0 0.618. You notice that the two sides of the equations are not the same. So because of that, this does not work. So this is not the correct value of x for this equation. But let's try this. On checking this, and this original equation, we're going to be having the left-hand side to be 1.618 to be equal to x, which is this value, is also 1.618. You notice that what we have on the left hand side is the same as what we have on the right hand side and so this one is a take so we have this one as our final answer well i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did go ahead and give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos and like i always say until next time take care